What is happening, everybody? Hope all is well. This is a last minute live. I was going to do it as an upload, but I said, you know what? I know people, it's Sunday, maybe eating dinner, maybe you're done with dinner, maybe you're watching baskets, whatever. But we're here. Either way, it was going to get out, whether it be an upload or a live. So here we are, and we're going to do what we do. Today, we're going to break down the AFC North free agency, where we think teams are headed, whether they we believe they have direction or not. Um, we will get into our full mock draft at the end with no trades, as usual. Too hard to uh, predict where a trade will happen and where it won't. And we will have on none other than our sideline scout. I could not get in touch with our other partner. That's okay. Hopefully, he'll pop in at some point. But I was able to find somebody I know a little bit. You guys know. Without further ado, let's bring that guy in. My friend and somebody I love dearly. My son, Antonio. What's happening, my boy? What's going on? All right. Always good to see you, son. How are you? In front of the whole world. You've been a busy guy here, ducking me out of the sand. You know, I got well, there's good friends of us in the show here. They, they think you're ducking me. No, not at I mean, all. Is there something I should know about? <laughs> no. Because I know when you're ducking me, something's up. No. I'm not no. talking money either. It ain't about money. Everything's good? Everything is great. I mean, this is a football show. No wise guy shit here. What's going on? No, I'm just Where's the right kids? Here. Where's my grandchildren? Sorry, guys. I'll be with you in a minute. Where's my grandchildren? Nobody's home right now. I got to open All right. I'm glad, I'm glad you took that beard off your face, although I didn't shave. Let me say hello to our beautiful people that last minute jumped in here. Stevie, I know you will, and I do understand. I love you, my brother. Maureen Frick, I love you. You know it. Baywatcher, my man, 50 grand, what's happening? Maddie Boy, what's up? Whoever comes in, comes in. We'll do what we do. Whoever catches the replay, catches the replay. Maureen, I hope you like listening to football. Maddie, if you're here. Nick, what's happening, brother? Tony O, you understand when Pop tells you, do, do me a favor and not a favor. Nick, show Nick the love he deserves. Because when I tell you he deserves it, you understand what I mean. I like the icon. I love that. Nick is, is solid people. Very solid people. Nick, thank you for popping in last second. We weren't going to do this live. We were going to just do an upload. But you know what? You never know. You know, you know Nick and Stevie and Matt and my son knows it's his passion. It's mine. So we do what we do, and we're going to put it out there. Whether people watch it on a replay or not, we're going to do what we do. And this is something that's more of a passion than it is a uh, – uh, than some of – I mean, I enjoy every, all the shows we do, but uh, some, to me, I, I enjoy personally more than others. With that in mind, Tony O. Any um, before we get into the show and how we're going to do it, um, you have any thoughts on maybe sharing with some people, even though we're in the middle of hockey season is ending, right? You got basketball season ending, you got yeah. March Madness going on, but yet, yet the NFL clock and frenzy goes 12 months a year. Would you agree with that? Yes. And would you say this is a very big part of the year for even, I wouldn't say the casual fan. You think the casual fan is crazy with the JRF too or just the crazy? No, no. It takes it takes somebody that truly loves the, the team. Yeah, a season ticket holder. Yeah, somebody got to really love their team to, to understand that there's some right. people, you know, like me. Well, yeah, or, or a film junkie or somebody that's um, train a scout in in the making. Um, right. You know, I'm not ashamed. Uh, I don't feel that's uh, – I don't gloat about anything. 
Um, but truth of the matter is you are qualified to be up here and speaking. Um, right. As well as somebody that's not here this evening, I could not get in touch with him, and this was last minute. So, Chris Gorky, if you see the show, we were not trying to remove you. Yes, I was. No, I just couldn't get in touch with you, bud, and we decided to do it live. So let's jump right into it. Here's what I like to do, Toe. We did this last time, and we'll continue to do this. As you know, the mock draft changes weekly. If right. you want to give a little thought on why that happens, you can. Now's the well, time to do it. Well, this this from the last time we did it, I can tell you one thing. Um, we had a lot of a lot of people doing a lot of different things. I personally think my whole mock draft is completely different now. Um, and that's just two weeks ago. Free agency plays a huge part in it. Uh, camp casualties, cuts, surprise cuts, Aaron Donald retiring, you know, things like that that happen throughout the, the offseason that changes a whole – well, things that happen after the combine, really, that's when it happens. <clears throat> so, uh, yeah, I think a lot of things have changed. I think like 20 picks for me changed. Absolutely. Um, and we'll get into that as we go, but uh, I, I, I can tell you uh, just on my my board itself, and I, I've flip flopped a million times on yeah, guys, and uh, there are guys climbing and guys dropping. So without further ado, let's jump into the AFC North. I caught a lot of shit from from Jet fans when they come across this. I promised you I would touch on a couple of the moves you made, and I'll leave that for the end, and I'll tell you why I still feel how I feel. Um, and you made some valid points in what you guys had to say. And right. here we go. Without further ado, let's get to business. What we are going to do right now is break down. I'm going to break down the free agency moves in the AFC North, which includes... The Baltimore Ravens, the Cincinnati Bengals, the Cleveland Browns, and yes, the Pittsburgh Steelers. I will be speaking on the half, behalf of the Ravens, Tony O, Cincinnati Bengals. I will do the Browns. He will do the Steelers. So let's jump right into it. We know that Baltimore is one of those organizations that I talked about last week that a scout would say to another scout or an executive would say to an executive or announcer, you might hear it on TV. You know what a Raven looks like. Right. You know what a Raven is. Derrick Henry's a Raven. And Derrick Henry's a Raven. We'll get into that shortly. Unbelievable. But a well, well groomed organization starting from Owner Steve Bashotti to general manager Eric DaCosta and one of his top advisors in Ozzie Newsom, who was one of the best general managers ever. And this is coming from a Steeler fan, but when we do these shows, it, our fandom goes out the window and we're speaking like if we are not fans of any team. We're not. We're Let me ask you a question. Back. Let me ask you a question. You brought up the Jets, right? Like you're talking about a team that that um is ran the like the right way. That's the Ravens. That's what the Jets are missing from the top right. management down. And that's so. and that's then and hopefully uh, some of our Jet fans out there will understand what the few things I've already said and what I'm about to say. So I've I've gone through their front office. You know, you never see much movement with their front office. The cost has been there for a long time. Before him, Ozzie Newsom was there for a long time. Um, Steve Bashotti is a well-known, well-loved owner. He does not meddle in football decisions because he's a businessman. And he does know a little bit about it. He's one of the few owners that can talk football. That being said, he lets his football people make the decisions. Head coach is an excellent head coach. I consider one of the better coaches in the league in John Harbaugh, whether – I personally root against him or not. He could coach my team any day of the week. I only feel they struggle in one at one time of the year, and that's in the playoffs. 
But if you want to talk about an organization that is consistent, they would have to be one of the teams you would talk about first. So let me get into some of the Raven moves. Tony, oh, you want to disagree or agree with what I have to say about that? No, I agree. I think they're awesomely ran. I think that coming from a Steeler fan, you have to respect greatness. And I think that's the that's the epitome of what the Ravens are. They're always in it. And just not to go into your team, because I know you're breaking them down. Um, you know, you put anybody behind that offensive line and that play coach and, and all, all, all the things that go into a running game, you can put anybody. We've seen it over the years, you know, Gus Edwards, guys like that. Now you got Derrick Henry there. It's going to be an issue. You know what I mean? I, I well, feel like I, I, I could have ran for a thousand. Behind yeah, I want, I, I'm want. i glad you brought that up. I'm going to get into their uh, moves right now. I just wanted no. to touch on their front office first. No, yeah. All right, right because on. if we're going to start talking about teams – we need to let people know we understand the the executive side of it as well. Um, we didn't just wake up and um, read the pamphlet before we came on tonight, as you guys know. So here we go. Brian G., what's up, my brother? Timmy Irish, my man. Again, everybody, last minute, I said, screw it. Let's do it. You know, let's do it. I was going to do an upload, but I got in touch with when Antonio, he said, come on, Pops, let's do this. Here we go, Steelers. You know it. You know it. You got Steelers in the house, but we're going to break down the AFC North. I just did the Ravens front office. Number of great things to say, as you know, whether we're Steeler fans or not, we are coming from the angle of speaking facts. One of the most stable organizations in the league. If there's only one thing, Davey T, if there's only one thing to say where they struggle, it is playoff time. Other than that, Talk about stability. That is an organization you look at. So let's get into their free agent moves. Sal, we go. We got people showing up now. Welcome aboard, everybody. I hope you enjoy. Here we go. Let me talk to, uh, let's go over the Ravens moves in the offseason. And we'll try to be brief with it so we can move along. We have work to do tonight. We're going to do a full mock draft as usual um, with no trades. And we're going to break down what we believe to be. The sideline scout sees as his top five centers to enter. I broke them down. I wanted centers separated from guards. So that's how we're doing it. So I look at the Ravens. They bring in Josh Johnson. They lost Huntley, right? I like Huntley personally. I think it's a downgrade as far as a backup, but he is a veteran. And I would not be surprised uh, during camp somebody gets cut. It's a better name. They pick him up. But, solid, you know, he's a guy that could come in and win a game for you. He's not somebody who wants to play five or six games. But I can't, I'm not going to, you know, you got to bring in bodies, right, for Lamar. Um, if Lamar gets hurt, they screw it anyway, just like most teams. You know, there's an old saying, if you have more than one quarterback, you don't have any. I'll explain that another day. Here we go. Derrick Henry. Great move for the Ravens um, for a player that I don't believe is not even um, halfway done. Um, he replaces a guy that left in Gus Edwards, who is uh, was a power back, whoever doesn't know, strong back with a little wiggle to him. Derrick Henry, for those that know, I don't need to say, Derrick Henry is a guy that just can – Carry, 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 and by the fourth quarter, you do not want to uh, tackle him anymore. Excellent sign for the Ravens there. We got work cut out for us for any Steeler fans. But when we get to when Antonio gets to them, he'll tell you who the answer for Derrick Henry might be this year. Wide receiver Nelson Aguilar, solid player. Um, if I think there's an area that Baltimore struggles in, um, I might get again. I'm not worried about. The comments, that, that's good. Everybody should have an opinion. I'm not going to say, I think losing, uh, Beckham had probably one of his better years in a long time. Gave him up. I think Rod Rashad Bateman's been underwhelming up to this point. Has all the traits, but as we know, as you know, in one of your assignments with the academy you're with, you were asked to break down Rashad Bateman, and we did it, and underwhelming. Would you say? Yes, I would. 
Okay. Offensive tackle, Josh Jones. All right. Not Depth piece, uh, free agent deal. I, I mean, I, I'm not going to go overboard with that. I'll move on. I mean, I'm not going to add too much to it. Um, I think they lost. Uh, I know they lost Morgan Moses, and I do think they're hurting in the guard area. Um, uh, they have the solid at center with Lindebaum, right? So the key move for them, I believe, here is Derek Henry's a huge sign, and a huge signing is re-signing their own player in Justin Matabike because teams were lined up praying he hit free agency. But because they had to re-sign him and they got some big names coming up, they had to lose a player that we'll find out later, later who was a big player for them. And that's what happens in this league because you have to pay a Roquan Smith who's a quality player at the mic, inside backer, or in today's terminology, off-ball linebacker. I'm an old head, right? You're, in your world, it's off-ball, right? Yes. But you, you didn't play growing up here in that, did you? Did I teach you that? Inside or outside, or was it off-ball? No, it was more inside-outside. Yeah, we used to just inside. But now it's off ball. All right, so we'll go on. Brett Urban, I like him. Good defensive line piece. Um, been around. Uh, linebacker, special teams, more of a special teams guy, no doubt, for his board. Malik Harrison, um, I would say, uh, been around. Journeyman, bounced around. And cornerback, Arthur Millett. I don't have too much more to add to that outside of Great front office, great organization, excellent team every year, well prepared, ready to play. Two excellent signings um, in Matabike and Derrick Henry. And um, my outlook for them is every year, this year will be no different. They'll be fighting to win the division and go further. What will happen? Injuries play a role in a lot of things. So you can't predict injuries. I see the Ravens battling for the top of the division, barring the unforeseen. Tonio, I'm going to scroll and give you your Cincinnati. Okay, hold on a second. Go up a little bit. They had so many teams. That's the problem. They had so many free agent signings. Holy shit. Let's go to the north. I got you. Can you see it? Yeah. All right. Take it away, my friend. So, uh, so we're going to do it like this, right? Do it your way. You look at you look at Zach Moss. He had a overwhelming season last year with Jonathan Taylor being hurt, right? The the comment the comment board is blocking the I'm gonna take him off right now. I just wanted to thank him. Go ahead. So Zach Moss overwhelming in his play last year with the the Colts. I think you know he was running the pill harder than Jonathan Taylor at some points of that season. You know obviously Jonathan Taylor was hurt. Did they lose Joe Mixon? I'm sorry to interrupt. Or did he resign? No, Joe Mixon uh, signed with the uh, Texans. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Here we yeah. go. Thank so you. you lose Joe Mixon. You know, Zach Moss is their starter unless they address, which I do think they address that in the uh, in the draft. A guy okay. like Blake, Blake Corum fits their mold. Okay. Uh, but uh, to go back to what you did, you know, you looked at the the management, coaches, and stuff like that. I think Zach Taylor's hot seated already. Okay. What is he? Twenty eight and thirty eight as a head coach. I mean, I don't like those numbers. Probably the argument you'll get. I don't disagree with you outside of what he's shown lately, but he was ready to be fired probably two years ago, and then they go to the Super Bowl. Or yeah. Hundred percent. His the only thing that's keeping him there is that he's five and two yeah. in the playoffs. Absolutely. So, um, so I, I'm not. I'm not disagreeing. 
We but, know Pat got you got T. Higgins who's begging to leave. Uh, that should speak volumes. Why would you want to leave Jamar Chase? Why would you want to leave Joe Burrow? So maybe there's some internal locker room issues there. I wouldn't want to leave there. Maybe okay. he, he's a one. And they, did they lose any other receivers? Free agent Tyler Boyd. Did he leave? Well, they yeah, didn't, they free didn't. Agent. well he's a free agent, but he didn't leave yet. No, but right. So technically, he's a free so agent. But he hasn't a, right. So technically, he's still on the board with them. He can mm -hmm. come back on a one-year prove-it deal. Um, Could absolutely. You know, Trenton Irwin, he's a, a guy that's a fourth, fifth receiver. Uh, Mike Isicki is a cute little signing for them. You don't know that usually their tight ends do. You've seen in the past their tight ends do play a lot and a Absolutely. lot of no-name no, no guys with them. Um, uh, Tanner Hudson, another another good tight end. Not a good tight end, but a good a splash guy that can make some yeah. plays. If you see the trend they did, they yeah. were – I'm looking at it, yeah. They got some plans. Yep. So um, that can just tell you, you know. What they're, what they're planning to do, absolutely. It tells me. Cody Ford, uh, Trent Brown, all these guys, you know, uh, I'm not really – those aren't sexy for me, so to say. But they're good signings. Uh, uh, Sheldon Rankings, another one. He's – that's a – that's – now – that's a very good signing for a d defensive tackle. I thought he had one of the better years with the Texans. Yeah, and they lost their best defensive player in DJ Reader. So it, right, it's so a great he, fill, he fills that right in. And for twenty six yeah. million, I think that's a deal. Mm -hmm. uh, go go down a little bit. Hold on. Uh, no, no, no. Uh, yeah, we're good. We're good. We're good. We're good. Go. Uh, Hold on, Bob. Ladies and gentlemen. You can just scroll up. Yeah. All right. Here you All go. Right. You good? good? Yeah, that's good right there. Got you. So they go out and they get Davis Gather. Um, he's a depth guy. He's not a guy that's even going to see the field with uh, some of the pieces they have. I s maybe. Uh, maybe special teams. Uh, then you go out and get Von Bell. Von Bell is a, uh, another depth guy. He was kind of he's. I think he's going to play the role like Keanu Neal played last year. If someone gets hurt, he's going to step in. He's, you know, he's a veteran. He can definitely play the position. He can definitely play football. Geno Stone is the best signing out of all of these, in my opinion. Uh, you know, you want to tell everybody where he came from? He came from the Ravens. I liked him coming out of Iowa. So when he came out of Iowa. I, I wanted him to be a safety for the Steelers. I like Geno Stone. He's one of those guys, a rangy guy. Uh, he's a special team player. He's just a, a football player. You know what I mean? He he can play in pass coverage. He can come up and run support. So uh, it, definitely a good signing for 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 the Bengals there. Uh, here's the thing. What do you what do you got? Anything else? I mean, if you got more guys you want to talk, talk it. Otherwise, you got an outlook for them or. Uh, yeah, well, that's what I was about to say. So here's the thing with the Bengals. I'm not sold on Joe Burrow's health. Mm. I you know what I mean? Know. I'm sold on Joe Burrow. I love Joe Burrow. You know, I'm not talking to Joe Burrow as a yeah. football player. I'm talking to Joe Burrow. Know. At, you know, what's what's the best ability? Accountability is availability. He's never you available. Know. He's always hurt. He's always hurt. So... So if you if you really think about it, Nick says you're doing a great job, bud. <laughs> thank you. So 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 if you really think about it, right, and you go and you look at the uh, the 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 outlook of of the Bengals, right? Their their whole season is relying on one guy, and if he's not available, then you see what you saw last season. You, you you know what I'm trying to say? So I, I'm just not I'm just not really sold on the whole Joe Burrow being healthy thing. Right. I think one thing they should do is is draft in the draft they should definitely pick up a quarterback in the draft because they don't have any depth there. All right. So future outlook for this season coming up. Step forward, step back. I don't think you can go any further back than what they did, so I'm going to say step forward. 
Okay, are they battling for the division? No. Wild card? No, I don't think they're a playoff team. Wow. Unless, un, un, unless Joe Burrow's healthy, but he's got to show that to me. I think they. I I, I got to agree with one thing. He gets hit too much. They don't take care of the kid. They need help on the offensive line in a few spots. And I think they got some holes that people don't see. And that's that. And with that, I thank you for your uh, opinion. And based off of the facts, you know, um, educated opinion. I'll say that. And with that, I'll go on to another one of the teams that I love so very much, the Cleveland Browns. And there we go. Okay. So the first first of all, so let me tell you about what I think about the Cleveland Browns. Front off. I'll make it quick. Owner Jimmy Haslam has finally learned to shut up, stop firing coaches every year, let a coach stay for a year or two, okay? Which he's doing. Let your football people run it. But there is a huge hole that has left Kevin Stefanski's um, staff. And that is the best offensive line coach in football. And his name is Brian Callahan, who has taken the head coach, uh, the offensive line coach for the Tennessee Titans because his son has become the head coach who was with the Bengals as the offensive coordinator, I believe. Um, Bill Callahan leaves the Browns to become the line coach for his son, Brian Callahan, who becomes the head coach for the Tennessee Titans. Now, what I think is this about the Browns. They finally have things in order as far as the owners staying out of shit. They got a decent, I, 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 don't, I, I would say Kevin Stefanski's a good NFL coach. They have a great, great defensive coordinator and game planner. Jim Schwartz is one of the best in the game and has been around forever. I'll put him up there schematically, strategically with the best of them to shut down an offense in a one-game deal. Let me hit the free agents. James Winston, right? Again, I said you don't have one. If you have more than one, you don't have any. Right? We only know you need a backup. My problem is this. It's not my money. What has Deshaun Watson done? Forget about earning $230 million. We haven't seen the real Deshaun Watson since he left the Texans. Jameis Winston might be better than this. Right. So we're going to have the kid from UCLA, DRT, right? The mayor, what's it? Robinson Tompkins or whatever the kid. Dorian Robinson Tompkins. Right. He, he shows some, you know, some ability. I think he's a, um, a marginal piece at best, in my opinion. Um, a spot starter. He had more than that opportunity last year. He is young. He could grow. But they brought in competition, so I get it. They need Deshaun Watson to be what he's supposed to be if they're going to contend. That's usually when you haven't done it three years in a row. I don't know why you would expect anybody to do it in the fourth. But there are anomalies, as we see Baker Mayfield has turned his career around. So I guess we're not going to give up on the Browns. are not going to give up on him yet, especially that the money's guaranteed. Dante Foreman. So Winston's a good sign, I believe. Dante Foreman, been around forever. Solid back, gives you a little bit more. Um, but he's a depth piece, I believe. Naheem Hines, good signing. Your typical third down back can give you a little bit more, more of an outside guy, can get inside the tackles, won't break it down totally. Gives you a little third down uh, passing game stuff. Hi, right, Kelly, how are you, babe? Big move for them, a huge move for them is – making a trade, I believe, for Jerry Judy. Now, I will say this, and I'll probably get a lot of bullshit on this, but it is what I feel. Done. I thought Jerry Judy, uh, he's been a solid player. Do not get me wrong. I thought he was going to be a superstar in the league. 
I'm not saying he's not played very well. He's played well. And we they could go different coaches, offenses, whatever. It's a big sign for the for the Browns to go along with Cooper, right? And they have um, a couple of tight ends there. They have some weapons. Um, offhand, you got Elijah Moore, right? Um, uh, the kid Cooper, right? Now you add Jerry Judy to them. Now you got two guys that can blow by you. Um, Jerry Judy probably being more of the speed guy and uh, Amari Cooper being more of the route runner with speed, I, I would say. Elijah Moore is that that Debo Samuel, maybe not, his, but he can do it all. I love, I don't think he's used right. That's another story for another day. James Prochet, a four guy, I would say, you know, good, good sign. You know, not a great player. He's, he's a good player, steady player. You need to make a catch, he'll catch it. Guard Michael Dunn, I would say he's a death piece. If he makes the team, great. If he doesn't, then not, there's no hurt, no no harm, no foul. So Darius Smith's a good um, re-signing for them, considering, um, I think, what they had there, um, in my opinion. Shelby Harris, I don't have too much on him outside of uh, – He's been around, you know, he's been around. He's a solid player. I'll say solid. Maurice Hurst thought he was going to be a much bigger player coming out of Michigan, I believe, correct? Yep. Okay. Uh, still, still. Um, I don't know. I guess he's he, he's a, a, he's a, a jack, just a guy, right? He's just a guy. You know, maybe I'm wrong. I see just the guy there. He does his job. No more, no less. Quentin Jefferson. I like Quentin Jefferson. Um, maybe a little long in the tooth. Big dude, strong dude. Coming off a good year. Don't know why the Jets let him go with depth, depth for depth reasons. But I think it's a good sign. Devin Bush. He's a bum. Yeah, well, you know, after his rookie season and he blows out his knee, he was never the same. Um, he's really exposed. Seattle gave him a shot. Couldn't even – he barely played. So I, I don't – I wouldn't be surprised if he's he doesn't make the team. I, you know, remember, but we'll go back to this video. I don't believe he makes the team. Jordan Hicks, I like him over Devin Bush. I like him ten times. I think he's yep. their starting middle line. No lineman. question. Tony Brown, cornerback. All right. You know, I don't have too much either way to say about him. You know, again – um, J.A.G., just the guy, and the punter. Um, I got to tell you guys, full transparency, unless he's one of the bigger guys, I didn't do my homework on him. So that's the Cleveland Browns, and I'll tell you what I think about their outlook. They have a solid defense. They have a, a, a good offense, but their whole team is going to decide on what Deshaun Watson they get. I don't believe after three horrific years for him, he all of a sudden gets another year older and shows up and becomes a Deshaun Watson pre-issues, pre-Houston Texans. So therefore, I believe because of quarterback problems and Deshaun not being Deshaun, he starts – he doesn't play well, or he's not the Deshaun. Winston takes over, does what he does, throws for a lot of yards, throws for big interceptions at big moments. And Cleveland will always play division teams tough, and maybe they fight for a wild card spot, but I would not surprise, depending on the play of Watson again, a step back. That's just how I feel because it's so based around Deshaun Watson. Nothing of recent time has told me he's going to get better. That's how I feel about uh, the Bengals. And here we go. Tell me if you're in the right spot. Yeah, I got it. I got it. Tell us about, you know, if you want a little bit about uh, the front office, what you think, blah, blah, blah. If not, go right into it. I mean, it's going to sound like it's biased, but, you know, I think Omar Khan yeah. right now is one of the hottest. No, don't be biased. Put all that shit aside. 
I think Omar Khan is one of the hottest GMs in the league. I think that old school way of, of, of Pittsburgh not doing nothing in the off season is completely done. I think that's old school. I think that's, that's why, uh, I think he proved that last season in the off yep. season. Um, Mike Tomlin is Mike Tomlin. I don't know why some Steeler fans want him gone. If, if, if that's the case, you're not a real Steeler fan. In my opinion, I think you're, you're, you're a bozo, but we'll, we'll, we'll move past that. And we go to a quarterback play. They seen, They've seen that they made a mistake with Kenny Pickett, right? A lot of teams hold on to that mistake. A lot of teams will give that mistake another contract, right? Daniel Jones. Not saying that Daniel Jones was a mistake, but he ain't a franchise quarterback, right? And he's, not, and he's not a 45 million guy, right? So, so you go this way, right? They've seen that they made a mistake. They seen that Mason Rudolph, how 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 poised he was and how much of a team player he is, and they gave him an opportunity to go get paid. And I think that 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 that's a that's a good uh, yeah. They wanted the kid to get paid. Yep, that was good. They 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 like him. They didn't want to hold him there and let him be a third string guy. So they go out and they go get Russell Wilson, right? Um. For free. You know, you look at the schematics and the, the breakdown of that deal. You got Russell Wilson, who threw 28 touchdowns last year, n barely no picks. And in play action, like we were talking about, in play action, he was a top three quarterback in the league, right? And what um, is the new offensive coordinator doing Pittsburgh? Arthur Smith loves play action. If you look, go back to, to Ryan Tannehill and A.J. Brown year, you know, Absolutely. all of those numbers came from play action. So if you look if 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 you look at what they're doing, in my opinion, they're letting Russell Wilson take the helm, right? Like he's the guy. But really why they brought Russell Wilson in is for their next move that they made was Justin Fields, right? I they agree. like Justin Fields. Mike Tomlin likes Justin Fields. I think Steeler fans love Justin Fields, right? Right. So he's young, he's 24. Worst case scenario, he sits for two seasons. He's 26 years old. Worst case scenario, Russell Wilson takes us to a playoff game. He wins a playoff game, right? <laughs> yeah. So, so we did. So you 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 go. He sits behind him. He learns, right? But there is absolutely no high risk, high reward. There's none of that. There's Little risk. There's actually no risk. So if you look at the thing, you got Russell Wilson for free, right? You yeah. realize you realize you made a mistake with Kendrick Green. You traded him for a six-round pick. And that six-round pick, they trade for Justin Fields, who they thought they were going to get the eighth overall pick for. So how Omar Khan fleeced the Bears again because they got a first-round pick last year for Chase Claypool, it happens. I like it. We'll move on. I got to ask you one question, Tom. God. In your opinion, we we haven't spoke about this. I believe, and tell me if you think I'm wrong here. I believe, even with Wilson as the starter, you will see Justin Fields in certain packages. Yeah, Taysom Hill, like I think so. I think so because he's so effective with the ball in his hands. There you so go. I, That's all I wanted to ask you. Go ahead, buddy. I, I do. I, I think that. So now you go to to what the Steelers' blaring need is, right? Everyone's screaming center, 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 center. You need a receiver on the team, right? The Steelers, the Steelers are known for drafting very well in two positions, right? That's receiver and that's edge rusher. You can't draft a corner to save your life. The last good safety you drafted was Troy Palomalu. So I think personally – as a Steeler fan, I want them to go out and get a, a receiver if they don't make a move now, for one. The receiver depth in the draft this year is very deep. So I'm not screaming receiver pick one. I'm not saying that. I'm screaming receiver in the second and third, though, 100%. Absolutely. More so the second. You Agreed. go out and you get Van Jefferson. He's a splash player. I liked him coming out of Florida. I liked him a lot. 
right? So you got Van Jefferson as a guy with good hands. He runs good intermediate routes. I don't think he's a guy that's going to take the top off the ball. Good possession guy. Yep. Good, yeah, intermediate guy. And he's again, be, and again, gonna, he got traded. I didn't know this. He wound up in Atlanta last year, right? Yeah. Arthur Smith, head coach. I'm sure he had something to do with him coming to the Steelers. A hundred percent. Yep. So he he, he has that. I think he's going to have that that Corey Davis effect when Arthur Smith had Corey Davis in the with the Titans. So I hope you're right. So I think he's going to play that role. But we haven't seen who I think is our hidden gem, Calvin Austin. We haven't seen the kid play. Well, we, we can figure out why, but we'll see this year. So. You go past Van Jefferson, you get Martravius Adams. If you watch Steelers, if you watch Pittsburgh, you know that Montravius Adams is a great depth guy. Yep, that's what so, you need, rotation. I think Keanu Benton clearly is the starter. Yeah, the future, yeah. You know, I think that's the – Cam Hayward's always going to be the guy, but huh. Keanu Benton's going to get on the field a lot more. Yeah. Uh, Montravius Adams, for me, was awesome. Now we great go – Great. So what, now we go – so what changes our defense completely? Absolutely. We haven't had a middle linebacker since Ryan Shazier. True. We haven't been able to replace Ryan Shazier. Yeah, that's an even better word, yeah. You, you, know, you understand what I'm saying? I'm not saying that we don't have middle linebackers in the history of Steelers. I'm saying since Ryan Shazier, we have not had a middle linebacker. So you, you look at Patrick Queen and what he did. In my opinion – with or without Roquan Smith, he's a game changer in the middle. I believe he had better numbers still. Right? Yeah. But a lot and of they, people could, Yeah, no, I love Roquan, no doubt. I mean So so you do this, right? You look at you look at the, the, the defense now. You go from you go from a bunch of practice squad players playing middle linebacker because of injury to having possibly a top three, four middle linebacker in the league. On the Pittsburgh Steelers. So not only do you have Watt, Highsmith, now you put a, a solidified play caller in the middle of the field. Cole Next Holcomb. Will land in, yep, Holcomb. Cole Holcomb is going to give Landon Roberts a shot, like a run for his money. I think Landon Roberts, Landon Roberts beats him out. But at minimum, you got great depth. Now you got Cole Holcomb as a depth guy. Yep. Regardless, they're in a good situation at the linebacker position. I could see them going late, like later, later on, fourth round, maybe grabbing somebody if somebody falls. Or what the, with the Steelers, what they've done, they can go best available for the first three rounds. That's what they've done. With what they've done. So now you go past Patrick Queen, you go Dante Jackson. Here's a kid that came out of LSU, supposed to be a lockdown corner. If you've seen – his tape. I broke down his whole tape. If you look at his tape, he is stride for stride with number ones. I'm not saying he's a lockdown corner. Let's don't get that twisted. He's very he's very fundamental in his phase, right? So he's always in phase and he's always poised to make a play. I think pairing him with Joey Porter and a kid that no one's heard of. Corey Trice. Absolutely nobody's nobody's talking about him. So I think that the kid Corey Trice is is gonna get a good shot. Regardless, we're in a good spot because either Dante is gonna play the other outside or he's gonna play slot. Absolutely. So you you traded Deontay. A little sad about it because I love Deontay. But Pickens is the future. Pickens is better than him. And to be honest with you, why pay Deontay when he has a negative attitude and he's putting that off on Pickens? Yep. Okay, so you trade Deontay and you get a solidified corner and is what we need. Patrick Peterson was long in the tooth. He was gone regardless. They didn't even know where to put him. Okay, so then you go to Deshaun Elliott. Every Steeler fan, every Steeler fan was screaming Justin Simmons, Jeremy Chin, or Cam Curl. Yep. Myself, Justin Simmons, Justin Simmons. But in the reality of it, why pay Justin Simmons? Yep. Why pay him? Yes, he's great, all pro, but we don't need to pay him. The guy's a missile. You, you don't need to pay him. In my opinion, 
C.J. Gardner Johnson, a lot of Steelers fans wanted him. I think he's one of the most overrated. Look at their numbers. Look, look at Deshaun Elliott's numbers and look at C.J. Gardner Johnson's numbers. You need a safety for the Pittsburgh Steelers to make tackles. We need them to tackle. C.J. Gardner Johnson does not tackle. We passed that. I like the signing of Deshaun Elliott. I hope they address that position in the draft as well. Miles Killebrew is the best, the best special teams player in the planet. That was huge for us. Now we go to Bill Burr, which is Cameron Johnston. I happy all time. We got a, a, a legit punter. All time. Uh, and then you go to Christian Kuntz, who a lot of people don't realize Long he is he is so pivotal on our team. He's a long snapper that goes out there after long snapping and is a linebacker, right? He comes down the field and hits. I like him. He's not going to make or break our team, though. But when do long snappers get three-year deals? That's right. That's how it was the last time. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. So I think that the Steelers went from the laughing stock with Kenny Pickett to my opinion – one or two in the division. They're gonna they're they're gonna be most likely the favorites to win that division. Think so? I I personally do. I'm also a Steelers fan, so it's hard. Ravens are a legit team. I can't overlook the Ravens. I'm not worried about the Bengals, and I am not worried about the Browns. And to be completely honest with you, I'm not worried about the Ravens either because they haven't beat us in how long. All right, but take 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 that out of it. Put your scouting hat on, as you did with the breakdowns. Rasta for Rasta, schematic for schematic. You see them as evenly matched teams. One thousand percent. I think the Steelers got way better. Listen, T.J. Right. Watt should have won Defensive Player of the Year. I don't I'm think sure. that anyone is denying that. It's He's a joke. Great. And been screwed three times, two or three it's times. A, yeah, it's a total joke. You got one of the best safeties in the league. We'll right? get to that question, Tabs, and definitely. You, you, you go out and you got one of the best safeties in the league, right? Absolutely. Outside of the Ravens' offense? Kyle Hamilton. Yeah, Kyle no, no, it's something to it. You know, hey, that's how you feel. That's it. Let's yeah. go. I'm, I just All don't. Right. I, I just don't know. I love the Ravens, though. As a Steelers fan, some of my favorite. Yeah, we players hate them, but we respect them. Yeah. Ray Lewis and Ed Reed were my favorites. I loved yeah. them. I loved watching them growing up. So Jamal Lewis, but you now to get to that right, Tyler Boyd. Here's the thing with Tyler Boyd, right? I love the story. I love the story. You're a Pittsburgh, Pittsburgh kid. Yeah. You played at Pittsburgh. You want to come home. You brought in Van Jefferson. Where does he go? You need a solidified two or three. Right. We need another guy. A, you a need guy a solidified two. In today's world, you yeah. need a two. We is need Calvin some, Austin yeah. a two? Right. We need somebody that's going to take doubles away from Pickens. Does right, Boyd, but, right, does Boyd attract doubles? That's what answer, I'm asking. Answer this question. Mm -hmm. uh, is Calvin Austin a two? No. Not yet. He hasn't proven it. Is Van Jefferson a two? No. So Tyler Boyd is not a two. No, he's a three, two or three, a three. So now you're gonna got you're gonna get three guys if you sign no, Tyler three, Boyd. Right. I, I agree. I agree. We, you need a splash. You need a guy that it's gonna you threaten need a Mike Williams. Well, you need to threaten him. You need somebody that's gonna threaten him. You know, gonna a take T. The Higgins. Yeah. So that's my thought process on that. Justin Jefferson. Um, I got you. Devontae I agree. Adams. But I, I, but I got to tell you, it's not my money, but I'm not upset we didn't get Mike Williams, and I love Mike Williams. I don't. I, listen, I wasn't one of those I guys. I love him. Another I, one. Again. Never on the field. Availability, accountability. He'll play three games for the Jets. I might be wrong, guys. We'll see if he goes six. And at some point, he gets hurt. And I love Mike Williams. But that's the kind of guy you need opposite Pickens. You, you don't go from Deontay Johnson, George Pickens to right. 
the no, we George Pickens we, we, we need Yeah, we need something to go and threaten the top of the defense. Agreed. So, so, so in in terms of that, I think the Steelers are trend we're trending upwards. Um, and we'll All see. Right. I mean, they do draft right. well. All right, let's go. Um, what I want to do now is before we get into the mock. I'm going to ask you briefly. Let's try to keep it brief so we move this along because everybody likes to get to the mock. Who do you see? And I'll ask you. In, in, oh, okay. Who do you see um, at number five? And try to be brief with it. Not just give us the good points of what you see. Try to keep it at a couple of minutes. Like if you have. I'll just give you my top five. Give it to us. So. I got Hunter Norzad, Penn State, uh, six foot three, three twenty, top centers. Go ahead. Uh, I got Bo Limmer, Arkansas, six foot five, three hundred. I got Cedric Van Pran, six four, three hundred, out of Georgia. Georgia. Zach Fraser, six mm -hmm. three, three thirteen, West Virginia. Mm -hmm. And then I got Jackson Powers Johnson. He is 6'3", 330 yeah. out of Oregon. Yeah. Those are my top five. If I'm a Steeler, I'm looking at Jackson Powers Johnson in the first or Zach Fraser in the second. All right. Well, let's see how this um, – I'm not going to really touch on what you had because uh, I kind of had him the same way. Um, but I will say this. I would not be upset. If they were able, somehow they knew this, and they were able to address two wide receivers and still wind up with Pran or one of the other guys in the third. Now, do I think Jackson Powers is a a, a ten year plug and play guy? Yes. That being said, I think it's a deeper center draft than most people realize. So. If a guy like – and we'll see as the draft plays out. Um, I wouldn't sit too long. I believe they do like Frazier. We're going to see. Let's see how our mock plays out. So, thank you for that breakdown. Thank you for your free agency thoughts. You want to pull up the simulator or you want me to do it? I'll, I'll pull it up. All right, here's how we'll do the simulator. So, we'll go pick for pick. You start with pick one. Okay. And I wish I had a sound machine here. Do you is your sound machine working? What sound machine? You know, like uh if you wanted to boo a pick, you could boo it. <laughs> no, I don't have that. Because I want that shit on. I got you know what? I'm gonna get the boo noise on my phone. So if you make a horrible pick, I'm gonna let everybody know what I think about it. And you do the same. <laughs> Davey T, if you're still there, uh, we know your bears are on the clock. Uh, <laughs> Did you hear it? <laughs> you're done. Because I know you come up with some some good ones. I love it. I wish uh, I, I would give you the other ones, but I'm only going to give you negative shit. Let's go. Let's do it. Ladies and gentlemen, with the first pick in the first round. The you, have to, you have to add the thing. Got it. Here we go. And let's get to it. Hold on. You want to play with that or you got it? I got it. Right, let's go. Chicago Bears on the board. Nicholas, when the Steelers pick, you pick for the Steelers. Put it in the box. Tam's in. We do mock every week. You you got them next week, buddy. Thank you for coming in, man. Give us a like and subscribe. Anybody watching in the weeds, we appreciate it. We do a lot of things on this show, not just football. This just happens to be our passion. Appreciate it, brother. You got to steal a pick next week, Tanzan. Tony O, first pick. Who do you got? No curveball. I was waiting for it. All right. I got the commanders. I could get a boo from you here because I'm going to surprise some people. 
Here we go. Here we go. Give me Drake May. Surprise everybody and not go Jaden Daniels. I got a reason, but there's no need to explain it. I had Jaden Daniels the whole time going there. Today is straight May. Three Patriots. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's why. And I think that Cliff Kingsbury believes Drake May runs just as fast and is bigger and stronger. That's why. Go ahead. Davey T, I'm on the clock with the Cardinals. I think the Cardinals trade here with the Vikings for J.J. McCarthy. Any trade is possible, but, we, right, we can't. We It just takes too long. We can't predict them, but you're right. There's a lot of trade spots here. Three, four, five, but we won't make believe there's no trades. I'm not happy with Marvin Harrison. Missed the combine. No pro day. Do I think that affects his the pick here? No. Marvin Harrison, Tony to the Cardinals. But I wouldn't be shocked if they went Navis. It would not shock me. I'd be pissed. Wow. Charges at five. This is this this is what changes the draft. Right now, let me get the boom machine ready. You know it. Here comes the boom machine. Son or no son, you're gonna get it. I hey, think Kaslin, no special treatment here. I'll bow his shit just as quick. I think they're gonna go Roma Dunsey here. All right, you're lucky. All right. I might get a boo here because I believe they need a, a big time. Uh, you know what? They can't pass on Malik Neighbors. Now they got to take Neighbors. I would have went tackle because I do believe they need one. But you can't pass Neighbors there. Titans. Titans go Joe Alt. Falcons, here comes your curveball. You ready? Are you ready for the curveball? Yep. Can you please give me edge rushers? Thank you. I don't care what the rankings say. It means nothing to me. You know that. Correct. I'm going to surprise you here, and I believe they go Jared Verse. Mm. Now, why am I saying that? I don't know. Been doing a lot of reading, a lot of studying. That's going to be your first. That could be a trade spot, too. Uh, but that does shake up the draft. So if you had the boo machine, boo it. Yeah, I would have definitely booed that. <laughs> I love it. I'm going to go Chicago here. So you went Caleb. Now way to go. I think they're going to go. Yeah, you need a lot of help that freaking team. They got loaded with receivers, right? Ooh, you're going to screw somebody bad there. So I have no choice but to do this to you, and he's a good player. And he's a good player. Tell you why I did that. I catch up. He's a good player, no doubt. Um. I think they need more. You know, they, you know what? They got holes everywhere. It's not a bad pick. It's not. What do we know? Jets. Let's see uh, who's on the tackle board. I think Fashano probably falls to them here. 100%. Maybe, maybe I don't go there. Maybe I have somebody rated above Fashano. They don't need a right tackle, though. They need a left. Fashano's the pick. I think they go Brock Bowers there. I don't. I don't think they will. They could. Man, we got Conklin. Yeah, all right. I took JJ the, McCarthy. I, I like that pick. I think the I think the Broncos. There's been some strong, strong rumors that Sean Payton loves Bo Nix. I think it's early, so maybe they trade back up. I think they go corner, and to add to the other kid on the other side, and. It's a matter of who he likes, knowing uh, Sean Payton. He likes quick. They don't have to be so big. Terry on Arnold's the pick over Quinny and Mitchell. Saints are on the clock. Let's go, Chicago. <laughs> the Raiders. Raiders. A lot of, a lot of needs there, right? 
They definitely need a tackle, right? You know, I've been hearing you – know, I mean, I'm just going to – you do what you got to do, man. That's what makes the mock great. It's an exercise. Um, yeah, yeah, I wouldn't be surprised, Tamsin. I've been hearing a lot of talk from not the fucking clowns. You know who I'm talking about. Real about – you know, the guys that are in the know. They love – yep, Tamsin. I'm not saying they're going there, but there seems to be some connection between Telesco and Antonio Pierce. They love Penix. I don't know if you pull the string there. I think there's so many holes, but you do have a couple of receivers. Play. I don't know. I don't know. I think they they're going to. I think they go Quinion Mitchell there. Okay, I, I was. I would have took a corner. I would. Uh, I think the Saints need. Um, you could use a bunch of things. Um, I do think they need somebody to replace. Uh, what's his name? The linemen they lost, they lost two linemen, free agency. Let me see the tackles and the interior linemen. Wow, it'd be hard to pass on Puaga or Fatano here. It would be very hard. I think Trevor Penning gets one more year, but they move him to the right, and they take J.C. Latham and put him on the left. Hey, right, you know, should I get the boom machine out? No. I like J.C. Latham. Oh, little Pips watching. Let's see what you do at 16. I'm, I'm, I'm on the the Colts. Colts. Oh, what do they need? Well, corners. I mean, I'm trying to think of a pen. I think they go Brock Bowers. Brock Bowers. That's, that would be a big pick for them. I'm going to go Seattle. Their secondary, I think, is fine. Although supposedly Mike McDonald loves, um, you know, big fast corners. He likes safeties that are big. It's early for that. They do need a center, a guard. Does Powers Johnson go here, or do they go defensive line? I like Latu Latu here too. Yeah. We have the uh, edge rush. They need um, – I'll tell you where we're going to go. It's going to surprise some people because I was going to go in t a defensive tackle, but you screwed it up with the kid going earlier. So I'm going to go uh, surprise everybody and go Dallas Turner. Mike McDonald, we know Baltimore loves speed. He's the fastest speed rusher in the draft. Jaguars. Are you booing that pick, by the way? No. All right. Be honest. Jaguars, Nate Wiggins. You're Where'd up, you man. go? Nate Wiggins. Corner? All right. I got the Rams. Oh, you went – oh, I got the Bengals. Okay. Yeah. Go to – Um, you got – with Zeus at left, I think there's no question here. They go, they can use help on defense. You lost the DJ Reader, right? You sign that other um, Sheldon Rankins. He's good, not great. Defensive tackle standing right there for me, Jazarian Newton. Or they could go right tackle. I think they go there, though, Jazarian Newton. You, like, you want to boo it? No. no. I'm booing it. <laughs> I think the, the Rams go Talise Fuaga. Amola. Oh, and I wind up with the uh, Pittsburgh Steelers. And I uh, hear Tamsin, I know you're watching. I want to thank you. So please give me a like and a subscribe before I make the pick. And promise you're not going to take it away. Because I promise you, at the end, when we get to three and four round mocks, you'll be happy. But for today... I'm going to pass on somebody you just don't want me to pass on. Now I'm going to go with Darius Mims tackle, Georgia. And I'll explain why if I need to. Otherwise, should I bow it? Nick, Nick uh, little Nicky said Jackson Powers. All right. You can't take it away. Go Jackson Powers. That's right. Nicky made the pick. I like the pick. It was, it was, listen, I'd be happy with any one of them. Anyone, you got your center for the next 12, 15 years if he stays healthy. Look, the history of the Steelers have always been built around centers until Pouncey left. Then it became a disaster. 
Before that, you had guys that played 10, 12 years each year. All right. Dolphins. They need Good some pick, help. Nicholas. Good pick. They need some help a little. Uh... Got a boy, Nicky. Dolphins, some holes. Oh, don't do it. Oh, give them more help, the bastards. What are their needs? What does it say their needs are? I'm just curious. I'm thinking they have some holes on the line. They, yeah, they need offensive line. Another help. edge rusher? No, somebody to help Phillips? I don't know. Secondary? Baywatcher, my man. I'm glad you came in. We gave you a little Tony O. Baywatcher said, what's good? Um, yeah. It's good to see. We want to do a little bit more. In each one, we will try to break down another division and their free agency moves. And then as we get closer, we'll be getting crazy. I think they go Amarius Mims here. Oh, that's a that's a great pick. They don't. They really need a left tackle. Or whoever they saw, they had to run on. They had Armstead, right? Yeah, but it's hard to pass on a guy six seven three forty that runs a, a I, one. I, he can play both sides. Yeah, he, uh, they, that runs a one six zero oh, ten yard split. Very hard to pass on. I think a glaring need for the Eagles here um, is definitely secondary corner, especially Bradbury long in the tooth. Question is, where do I go? So give me the corners. Pull up the corners for me. And somebody's going to fall to them that I can't believe. I love Kool-Aid, but I think just because of his flexibility, Cooper DeJean is the pick. Basically, he could play the nickel. He could play safety. He could play outside edge, boundary, and he returns kicks and punts. Mm -hmm. I could be wrong. That's just what I see there. Falling there. <laughs> you boy? Where would you have went? Tell me. No, I said I don't think you're wrong. Oh no, well, I want you to tell me. I love it. That's what makes this good. No, I, I like that pick. The Vikings yeah. on the clock. Did they get their quarterback? Did you give him McCarthy? I gave him them. I gave him McCarthy. All right. Where do they go here? Who's on their defense? What the freak do they need? Quarterback, they tight end, guard. They already screwed everybody by putting Brock Ballard somewhere. Oh, I can see 23. I, I, no, yeah, it's hard to argue. I don't care what the, yeah, it's hard to argue. If you would have went Graham Barton there, I would have understood it. If you would have went Connor Beebe they there, have, I won. they have absolutely no center. Yeah. I, I, and they're I, not picking. I like Zach Frazier sneaking into the first round. David T. Baywatch, I love you guys. Cinnamon Girl, you guys are the best. Tamsin. Stay with us, brother. You'll love it. You'll love it. We have some fun here. We got the best community of friends on YouTube, no doubt. Tony O, give me for the Dallas Cowboys, my favorite team. <laughs> this guy fits what they do. I know they lost Tyron Smith. I know they lost Michael Gallup. They have nobody opposite Michael Parsons. They don't have nobody outside of Diggs in the other corner, in my opinion. They need a lot of things. Let me see what's on that corner board here. I'm already think I know where I'm going. I can't believe Kool Aid is rated that low here. I have I told you I thought he was could be corner one for me, but I won't get into that. Go back to outside linebacker. And he plays the system they play and give me lot two, lot two, lot two, two. Now Michael Parsons has some help. I think Green Bay goes Graham Barton. We know Tampa Bay has lost their center. Um, my man, uh, J uh, Jensen, Ryan Jensen. They've lost another lineman, but. They lost Jamal Dean and Carlton Davis. I don't believe this is a reach here. I believe it's an uh, – it, I'm okay with it. I, I'm looking at the tackles. I see he's falling, that guy uh, right there too, but it's not a need at all. I, I know the value is high. It's hard to pass on for Tano here. I go cornerback, Kool-Aid, McKistry. Like it. Arizona Cardinals. Thank you, Bay. 
Thank you, brother. I forget all the time, man. We're only doing one round tonight, but next week we start two. Next week we will start two rounds. Eventually going to a – I have no problem. We have no problem doing a full seven round. This one's tough. Ooh, two receivers back. Right, well, you got to do what you got to do. You know, I don't think they go two receivers at all. Uh, they need guard help. Hard to pass on that guy, right? I see who you're looking at. They need guard help, but they're in a position where I'm not. I'm not the one. I'm not really sold on them. I like. I like this kid right here. Ooh, they, oh man, that's cool. I'm gonna go Peyton Wilson. I think he's mm. the best linebacker. I, I I like to see that he's climbing up the board. I do. Um, I, I'm, I, I like him a lot. He's added some weight. I really like him. He can run. Buffalo. I went over there uh, last year. Uh, they need an edge rusher in the worst way. Von Miller's done. They need they need an inside guy. You just took him. Let me. Uh, they got nobody in the middle. They they need. Let me see who you got. Oh my god. Yeah, he would be the pick there. Um, I'm going to give them chop rock. Well, let me see who's inside before you take it. Let me see who the inside linebackers are. Nobody worse, in my opinion. Well, that's your opinion. This kid is my favorite D yeah. tackle in the that's draft. That's great. I'm glad he's your favorite. Let me see off ball guys. I just showed you. No, I want to see it again. Thank you. No, those are edge. I want to see inside. I, I just showed you that. Those are defensive linemen. There's no inside linebackers? Oh, you're talking about linebackers. Yeah. Well, you said, oh, well. wow, they have them rated really low. I have them rated really high. But if that's how they're rating him, I don't see it that way. So it would be a reach here. Let's give him the edge. Give him chop. 100%. I think chop at 28 is a steal. I cannot believe Fatanu is still here. Wow. I think that's where he goes. I think he goes here. Typical. Yeah. And that's what a Raven looks like, by the way. Oh, no, no. I, I took him with the Lions. You're picking for the Ravens. All right. Well, he's a Raven. He's a hard-nosed mauler. Um, I got the Lions. Know the Ravens are going. You know where the Ravens are going. Um, I'm going to tell you where. D I can't believe I got the Ravens, and I don't want to give this guy to him, but I have no choice. Oh my God! How does he fall to them, Brian? Rob, Brian Thomas, my guy, who you know how high I am on him. Unbelievable that he falls in this draft. I think they go TJ Tampa. I, I love TJ Tampa. You know it, Kansas yeah. City. Last who pick. Do I, who do I got? Kansas, Kansas City. City. Let me see the wide receivers that are on the board. Oh, man. This is sickening that they're going to get somebody like this. Donnie Mitchell? Well, I'm trying to see. They lost William Gay, inside guy, right? They lost Ladarius Sneed, right? Pick him. Who's the corner? Give me a corner. Let me see one corner. Uh, there's only one more. I, I like Mike Sanistro or Ennis right. I go with Donnie Mitchell, Texas wide receiver. All right. Frankie, what's up, brother? Good to see everybody came in. Let's see what it looks like. Oh, you pulled it down? That's all right. All right, yeah. so we got to be able to save. Well, we got the videos to go back for them because every week it gets more fluid and we uh, it changes, you know, due to a lot of Hold different up. things. Be right back. <laughs> go take care of the kids. Absolutely, Frankie. Um I'm glad everybody came in. I had no idea we were going to do this today. I'm good, Frank. All is good. I was going to stay home and, and chill out, but last minute I said, let's get a mock in today and let's break down the AFC North and the centers we think that are, in our opinion, the guys top five coming out. And the mock fell the way it fell today. It falls different every week. Guys climb up, guys climb down, and, you know, we can't. Predict trades. We will do 
Towards the end, a couple of mocks with trades. Maybe we can get the chat involved. They can call my phone for the team they like, get everybody involved, and we make trades that way. We'll have some fun with it. I think that'll be a good idea. Um, I want the chat to get involved, make picks for their team, call up, call me, call Antonio, make a trade at that spot. That's how it works for those that don't know. I just I hope everybody en enjoyed. You know, we came on last second. I really appreciate everybody coming in. I we had fun. I mean, this is my passion over just about anything we do on this show. I enjoy them all, but this is something I really love talking about. As well as uh that young man that was just on here. But anyway, I love you guys Sunday night. Enjoy whatever basketball's on, your favorite program. Be safe. Take care of your kids. Tomorrow night, Ali Frazier won with Timmy Irish and the rest of our crew. Yeah. Yep. That's what we said, Frankie. That's what we said. Passion. That's right. That's right, Bay. That's right. I'm surprised Jimmy D's not in here cursing at me. But anyway, you guys have a great night. Be safe tomorrow night. Ali, Frazier, everybody, David T, Frankie Predator, Baywatcher, Kelly, Tamsin, thank you. Kelly, it's great to see you, Kelly. I hope all is well. I know you've been busy. My man, Bay, Cinnamon Girl, always. Benny, Sal, Nicholas. Lil Pip. I know that guy too. Another one. Timmy Irish. Nick, always my brother. Maureen Frick. I, I, I just love the fact we, the ladies love to hear we're talking football. It's great. Brian G, thank you. Everybody, everybody came in. I just hate missing any silence. Scout, thank you for your work. And uh, thank you for my grandchildren. All right, now that everybody knows that, we're all good. Let's have a good night. Be safe. Enjoy your rest of your evening with your family. And uh, I guess we'll see everybody 